Yamaha presents The Whitetail Diaries, chronicling hunting adventures of the most plentiful and intelligent big game animal in North America. Join top whitetail hunters nationwide. Embark on the amazing adventure that is hunting the whitetail deer. Well, last week on the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries, Wade and Steve Nessel from Yamaha Outdoors headed to Kentucky for the opening day of Kentucky Velvet season. Now on their first hunts, Steve saw several deer, but not the one he was looking for. Wade encountered an eight point in velvet, but he let him walk as his mind was set on a 10 point in velvet that took his breath away. But this trip isn't just about harvesting a velvet buck, even though that's the goal. It's about spending time in the outdoors and creating more memories of deer hunting with your buddies. I love to deer hunt, and I don't care what I deer hunt with. You know, a handgun, a rifle, a muzzleloader, shotgun, crossbow, you know, vertical bow, whatever it may be. I've just been captivated by it, and, and I've, I've been so blessed and fortunate to hunt all over the place. And bow hunting is a huge early season passion of mine. You know, generally for me, I, I grab my bow a lot from September through the end of October because that's just kind of a traditional time a lot of people bow hunt. Doesn't mean I don't bow hunt at other times of the year, but that is a really a big time where I'm, I'm grabbing my bow. And I can vividly and fondly recall so many of my bow hunts. You know, a bow hunt in Texas where I was at full draw watching a deer come walking by in a tree stand along along a creek called Lindsay Creek actually and the deer's coming out and I, I'm at full draw and we're literally trying to get a slow motion shot with an arrow and the deer comes by and I'll, I'll let it fly and hit the deer and he runs off perfect and you know we're able to capture this epic shot in slow motion that's was, it's hard to do which is you know the camera guy is an integral part of the hunt too and we're all excited about it uh, you know other hunts where I've been up high in tree stands, field tested in brand new products like the Garmin Zero that came out and literally had got the site the day before and now I'm drawn on a, on a, on a beautiful chocolate antler buck and, and you know the deer's out there posing, get the shot and, and you know we're, we're, while we're field testing a brand new product that hadn't even been released to the market, I've, now I've got a, a, an incredible trophy, I mean to just simply practicing in my backyard, just, just shooting my bow hearing that thwack of the target, just that whole deal. The, the, watching first timers take their, uh, take their very first deer, you know, being in the stand with them, watching that emotion, seeing that excitement, seeing that look of wonderment on their face when they, when they take that shot. And, and, you know, and then also enjoying the quest that other people have gone through. I mean, I look back on Kevin's first times deer hunting I mean, it was a quest. I mean, we had a whole series called The Quest out on watching him bow hunt. You know, I've been blessed to spend time with good friends many, many times over shooting big bucks and small bucks and does and watching bow hunting evolve and, and, and the enjoyment of it. And that's why when it comes bow season anywhere, when you grab that bow and you've been practicing for a long time and you're preparing, you're gearing up for that hunt, it's such a cool moment. You know, we're deep into our hunt here in Kentucky, making new memories right now. Still hoping with our fingers crossed that we're gonna be able to, you know, knock down some big bucks. Even though we've already had some incredible encounters, we're still hoping to get one. Whether we get one or whether we don't even see another deer the rest of this, this trip, this is another piece to the, to the movie of, of bow hunting uh, that I just, that I love and that it's, it's building into it and hopefully, as we go out into these last couple of hunts, we'll knock an arrow and we'll knock down one of these big Kentucky bucks in velvet. All right, when we return, Wade and Steve set out for round two of their Kentucky hunt. The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you by Yamaha's proven off-road ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Garmin Zero. Leave the guesswork behind. The all new Yamaha Wolverine X2. With a compact chassis, perfect for exploring tight technical terrain. 
an ultra quiet and smooth 850 class twin cylinder engine and next level versatility with a 600 pound dumping cargo bed. No other side-by-side -side delivers this level of proven off-road performance. The all-new Wolverine X2 from Yamaha. As people who love the outdoors, we know what we stand for. We stand for fish, wildlife, and conserving the places they call home. We stand for the traditions we inherited and that we must pass on. We stand for great gear, fair prices, expert service, and memorable experiences. At Bass Pro Shops in Cabela's, we stand together for you. Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. Steve's getting ready to go out on his second hunt for a velvet whitetail. So going into day two, um, I'm going into what I called Wade's original spot. He originally was gonna hunt at a spot over by kind of the same patch of land that, that I was on, but in a flurry late on opening day, we had actually hung a couple stands just in the back of the property where we were camping. Uh, they had seen some trail cam pics of some good bucks, and so he had decided to stay over there. So going into day two, it became about, is Wade gonna stay kind of where we're camping because I might move into his original spot on day two. And ultimately that's what happened. And it's another field edge inside the woods up in a tree a little bit of a different look because the deer aren't passing through like they were or they're not looking you know into two different areas I basically am looking up a hillside uh, and I've got bucks that can come in from you know pretty much 180 degrees and that that's going to afford me some opportunity so we're in the stand it's hot again it's hot every hunt and we're not trying to stay cool we're just trying to sit still and a fawn comes in and, and the fawns here are huge. The deer here are huge compared to Texas um, or even some of the deer I've been seeing in Georgia. They're just big and these fawns are, are like Texas sized does. But this fawn comes in on her own from my right, doe comes in from my left and they hang out for a while. They're just cruising. They're, you can hear, hear acorns dropping. They're milling around at anywhere from literally six yards to 60 yards in our setup. And it's cool just to be out again and, and have deer in front of us. And then a skittish, sketchy doe comes in. I, I swear, she, she seemed like she had some issues. She was twitching a lot. And, and I'm calling this the land of head faking deer because these deer, they'll be up, they'll feed, and they'll look around like there's deer coming and, and nothing, ever. And I got so frustrated watching these deer look around at nothing. They're hanging out, they're feeding, we're still, they're calm, it's cool. We're good, we're waiting on some shooter bucks. And it's getting a little late, it's getting to be prime time. I'm, I'm hoping we're gonna see a shooter here any, any moment. So does are in front of us, they're feeding. One of them wanders off, and now there's just one doe in front of us. And she's pretty much right out in front, just sitting there, feeding, milling about, and I see movement off to my right. So we had decided early on that if I saw a deer coming out, I'd tap my mic. And I saw two bodies off to the right moving, so I tapped the mic and I just leaned down and said to the right. And Almost right away I look up and there's horns, big horns on the one in the back. He's not yet where, where uh, Jeff can see him. So I kind of move a tiny bit just to get ready because if he comes in and he gets settled and he gets calm, I'm gonna draw and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot this deer. So just as I scoot, Doe looks up and she didn't like it. I don't know, I don't know why does don't like movement. I don't know why does concern themselves with me, period, to be honest with you. There's nothing to see here as far as I'm concerned. The does should just stay to themselves, but she, she, she hated it. She stomped, deer stopped, they looked at her. They never looked at us, the bucks didn't. She stomped again, again, snorted, half blew, went away, turned around, stomped, looked at us, and then she blew. I spooked the doe just as he was coming in. I was, I got too anxious, I got too fast, I got too eager, I got too careless. So we may be able to find pictures. We'll talk with Wade about it. Um, he was in full velvet still. He would have been awesome. <laughs> and he still might be awesome. I don't know, we'll talk about coming back here tomorrow or not. Um, they didn't, I don't think he knows why he left. He just followed that doe who blew, left, came back, hung out, stomped, 
and then trotted off and he finally did go with her, but I'm not sure he understands why he left. Maybe he'll come back. The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you by Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Conquest Sense, hunting sense and dog training sense. Stealth Cam digital scouting cameras, proven. Wiley X, absolute premium protection. How do you aim a 36-yard shot with a 30-yard fixed pin at a 15-degree angle with a 7-inch holdover without moving a single pin? Easy. You get one of these. Zero. The auto-ranging digital bow sight from Garmin. Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. Well, it's day two of hunting velvet bucks in Kentucky. Let's check in with Wade as he continues to pursue his magical buck in the heat of September. We're ready. The deer, they're used to this. They've dealt with it all summer long. Me, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's 100 degrees. I am sweating like crazy. But we're gonna get up into the tree stand here and wait for this late evening hunt in Kentucky and hopefully one of them big old velvet monsters will come out because I promise you if I'm sitting back at camp or in Texas or fishing I couldn't kill a big deer. Weather forecast is the same I think it's two degrees warmer as we get ready for day two uh, going to the stand you're just sweating going in but you're going deer hunting that's such a cool thing you climb up in the stand and you're you know you're waiting for the shadows to get long They've got to get out there. It's got to cool down. There's a few does will come in and mill around. I, you know, the fawns are hitting these mama does pretty hard. They always get up first and come through the food sources. And then eventually, you know, the bigger bucks will, will, will show up. But it happens so often at night and it happens so often right in the evening. And when you look at scouting pictures, so many of them are nocturnal at 11 o'clock and 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. But he's there, he's in the area. And you're just hoping that's the day he gets up early. So we're in the stand and, and as light goes down, the camera guys have to adjust constantly. They've got to make adjustments. They've got to, you know, to be able to gather more light. Sunsets at like 10 after eight, roughly. And for official and, and you know, and you've got a little bit longer than that that you've got good camera light. And all of a sudden I'm like, there's a big buck, there's a big buck, there he is. I mean, I can see these antlers coming through the hay and here's another one. And then I think there's another one and I think there's four deer out there now but they're just shapes and I need them to get closer. And I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, do we have enough? How grainy is this footage gonna be? And they're just crossing around out there. And it was mayhem in my mind because I thought one of them was the big 10 and he may have been the big 10, I'm not sure. And then this other deer comes in behind and then here comes what I perceived to be that eight point that I had seen the night before. And my heart's pounding. Cause I think I've got, I know I only have about five minutes left and, I, it, and, and, and I'm just waiting to get the shot. When I got out of the stand, I had no idea really what happened. They were all shapes and they were messing around. And the scouting camera actually told the story, ironically enough, the next day when I pulled that card. That eight point from the night before and an 11 point, a young deer and, and another deer had all kind of crisscrossed and got up there. I didn't see that in the dark. I mean, because it was dark. It was too dark to take the shot, obviously, by the time all this happened. And we sat in the stand for a long time to let everything calm down and clear out but and before we got out but the scouting camera told me what was there next day on the third day the winds were bad for that stand and i felt like i needed to give it a rest anyway so we went to another stand you know we work our way in drive the wolverine in cross this beautiful creek you hike down this little meadow area it's like right on the edge the wind is perfect for this stand uh, you climb way up to the top of it, you know, we're 20, 22 feet up. I mean, it's, you talk about an ambush spot. And it's where Steve had hunted the first day, and it's where this giant eight point 
uh, was living at as well. And, and we're sitting there and man, I'm hearing little feet rustle coming through the brush and a doe comes through and a, a buck comes by and a little buck comes by. And I see a deer off in the distance going down a fence line. And, I mean, it's just an incredible set on our third day. But my heart and my mind were back in that ladder stand. Well, day three was the toughest day of this hunt. If Wade would have seen the big eight point that was in the area, he would have taken him, but the buck never showed. Steve hunted the same stand from the day before as his shooter was a regular, but he didn't show either. So it's on to the final day of our velvet season hunt when we return. The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you by Smith & Wesson Performance Center. Performance when it matters most. High vis shooting systems. See what you've been missing. Quick draw mineral blocks. A difference you can see. Protect it or lose it. 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 Ingles got the original high performance cooler and a whole lot more. Ingle coolers, go with the original. Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. And we're into our, our fourth hunt and I've already, I know the pattern. I know where these deer are bedding. I'm watching deer come out of this area now. I know where the trail is that they come out. And I'm just staring at it. And here comes a doe and a fawn across and you know, I'm waiting for the shadows to get longer. And whoop, there pops out a deer coming across the coming across the field. Instantly, my heart starts pounding. You know, which deer is it? Is it a new deer? Is it is he in velvet? And this deer's walking in, and I'm thinking, oh man, he's, I'm grabbing my bow and I'm, <laughs> I'm hooking my release on. My heart's pounding. I'm studying this deer. And I'm thinking, I haven't seen this deer in daylight. Come to find out, it's that 11 point from the from the two nights before that. Uh, got in that late night deal. And I knew because I had seen the eight and the 11 and body size wise, I was like, man, I don't think it's a very old deer. I just don't think it's a very old deer. But now I got this guy on my shoulder talking, oh, you only got one day left, buddy. That's a good one, you better shoot him. When I deer hunt, I will shoot a deer because I love him and other times I will not. And sometimes it's about filling the freezer. Other times it's about his maturity. Other times it's about the moment. In this situation, I'm watching this 11 point come across and all I can think is what this guy on my left shoulder is saying, oh, you're running out of time. But this guy over here is going, where's the 10 point? Where's the 10 point? That's not the 10 point. And by the way, that deer's pretty young. Wade refrained from pulling back on that 11 point and let him walk. And the 10 point that Wade's been after all week, well, remained a trail camera legend. <laughs> In the end, though, Wade couldn't be happier about how his week turned out. I mean, what a great evening. Uh, the sun finally sets behind those hills. It gets quiet and shady. The deer start coming out through the hay, and you just see little shapes coming through there, and every now and then one of them will have antlers on it. And tonight, I saw him come in, and I was like, what deer is that? He's a great looking deer, and he comes in, works his way across, goes to the food source, and I'm sitting there, he's young. And he's got 11 points. Look at that nice little split there that makes him a 12. And I know the odds are against that deer making it to four, five, six, and seven, but I can tell you if I shoot him, he never makes it to that age. And I don't have a problem shooting, you know, deer that are, you know, eight points or smaller, but an 11 point that I think is two years old, couldn't do it. I mean, it just wasn't what it was meant to be. If I go home empty handed and I got to eat my tag, I've had my opportunities, and that's all you can ask for when you go deer hunting.
With Wade back at camp, we'll check in with Steve on his final hunt as he has the encounter he's been waiting for all week. So going into the last day, uh, last days, right? What do you do? We had options and we're talking with the outfitter. We, we had options in other areas and I'm gonna go back to the spot I hunted the very first night. My thinking was there's still a shooter buck over there. We haven't seen him and we think he's nocturnal, but he's the original and who knows, you know, we'll roll the dice. We could potentially get lucky. But my thinking more was the odds are stacked in my favor that there's that big body mature aid over there that you know, he's definitely a trophy, both for my wall and my freezer, if, if he comes in and offers a shot. He's a cool deer. He, uh, he didn't get me all excited and itchy the first night because it was the first night, but he is a good deer, and I'm going to go see if he's going to offer me an opportunity. For the majority of the evening, we had two fawns. I called them frickin' frack. They loved to love and hate each other. They'd run around, they'd smack each other in the face, and they'd lick each other in the face. And they were out for a, probably a better part of a half hour. One of them even bedded down. But then they left. I look up and off to the left, there's a shooter buck. I started at his body. I'm like, yep, big body. Body's not that big. Looked up, horns are big. There's velvet. That's that shooter buck. Are you kidding me? There is the shooter buck, the nocturnal deer. The deer that I thought, yeah, we'll roll the dice and go see if he shot. There's no chance of that happening. I say to myself, there he is at like 50 yards. He's looking around and if I could read his mind, I thought, just by the way he was looking, he was saying, where are all the deer? He was confused too by the lack of deer in that stand on my last night. And we've got the footage. We've got him coming in to about, probably about 30. He goes off to the right, he goes off to the left, he looks like he's gonna leave, he comes back. He was not calm. And he milled around, and, and again, it was almost like he was wondering, why, was, why am I the only one here? There was one moment when I probably could have gotten drawn and maybe, you know, got an arrow off. Um, but if we go back to my second hunt where I moved too early, I got too anxious, I had talked myself into a corner of deer comes in, you need to let him get settled, you need to let him get calm so you give yourself an opportunity to get a good shot off. He never did. He never came in. He actually ended up blowing. And we're not exactly sure why, but he went off to our left, he got out to about 45, 50 yards, Quartering away, I could see his tail um, through the trees. He flagged, blew, and took off. He just ran. He blew, another deer behind us blew, and that was it. What a great hunt. I mean, to see that deer, it, it really kind of put a cherry on top. Yes, I would like to have that deer on the ground. But to see him on the hoof, after looking at pictures of him weeks ahead of time, uh, writing him off is never, you know, probably never gonna see him at all. Um, I gave us probably 0.2% chance of actually seeing that deer out in front of us. Um, now nah, I didn't get a shot, I didn't get a deer, but I did see some really cool bucks. I had some really cool experiences in the stand. Nothing wrong with what happened or what went down out here. So now if you've always wanted a velvet buck and take on the challenge, head over to Worldwide Trophy Adventures to book your hunt with Salt River Outfitters. Go to WorldwideTrophyAdventures.com today. I'm coming back again. I love this style of hunting, this hot weather velvet hunting for big mature bucks. I just, it is so cool, it's so unique. It's so different than any other whitetail hunting that I've done uh, anywhere around the nation. Well, that'll do it for our trip to Kentucky for velvet whitetail. We'll look forward to next year as we'll continue this entry into the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries.
Introducing the all-new 4K camera by Stealth Cam. Proven. When I was in Special Ops, every item had a purpose, or it got left behind. It's no different today. If it doesn't protect me, or help me perform at the highest level, I've got no use for it. Otherwise, I don't come back with whatever it is I set out to get. Wiley X, ballistic rated eyewear. Introducing the Stealth NXT, the narrowest and most accurate 10 point crossbow ever. Measuring an ultra narrow six inches wide, the Stealth NXT unleashes devastating speeds up to 410 feet per second, generating jaw dropping kinetic energy and match grade downrange accuracy, all on a whisper quiet shot, three times quieter than the competition. The all new Stealth NXT from 10 point. What does it take to make Evercom deer scent? It takes a deer farmer who raises whitetails. It takes mixing the special blend of Evercom, testing each batch. That smells good. And then pouring each container. Once it's cooled, each container is cleaned, examined, and packaged for shipping. It takes the finest deer herd and a great team of people to make the best hunting scent available. Evercom from Conquest Scents. Many said that we were just obsessed when we started that there had to be an easier way to smoke food. As time passed, the Bradley family created a lineup of Bradley electric smokers that has made it easier for the novice or even expert chef to get perfect results every time they use it. Grab yourself a Bradley smoker and take your cooking to an all new level. High Viz Shooting Systems knows that your shooting performance matters in all conditions. All High Viz shooters experience faster target acquisition with our durable light wave sights. Featuring easily interchangeable light pipes, light wave sights give your eyes the exact sight picture you crave. Shoot High Viz. See what you've been missing. Purina's Quick Draw is the perfect solution for attracting deer to your location and providing them with the essential nutrients that will encourage their growth. Use these blocks where you can and I promise you, not only are you going to see more game, but the game's going to benefit from you placing it out.